teaching in spite of the what he had and attitude towards him by the people who are familiar with him which was derogative remarks humiliating okay and they refused to listen to his message because they said they knew him you know, there's a saying that familiarity breeds conduct. So, and they marveled, of course, at his wisdom, miracles, okay? But because of the prejudice, because of the negative attitude, they just took him like anyone else, okay? Because he was born among them. They said, we know his family and Jesus said a prophet is not accepted except is not accepted in his own country or by his own people it's without honor Jesus said this because to say that it's very unfortunate a prophet is sent by God and has a message for salvation so when people don't accept the message of the prophet and don't accept the prophet, then they reject the message of God. So it's very unfortunate. And it's something that we need to guard against so that we do not fall into that trap. Or else, the message of salvation, we shall miss out on the message of salvation, we shall miss out on healing, we shall miss out on being set free from our bondages. Because it is the time of the Lord's visitation. He has visited his people. He has visited his people for their own good. So at times the Lord visits us, and sometimes he goes uncognized because of our prejudice, because of our lack of faith, because of our doubts. Jesus says that where two or three are gathered by them, as they are their ministry. Where two or three are gathered on their ministry. Do we believe this? That as we are meeting now, wherever you are, you are following this, you are attending this Holy Mass, you are praying the Rosary. Do you believe that where two or three are gathered in Jesus' name is in our ministry? So if we do not believe that, then we are just like the people who did not accept Jesus and his message. So let us know and accept the message Jesus told us that whenever two or three are gathered in the name, in their ministry, is, the, is in their ministry. So, again, it is said that his word, that his word is powerful, his word heals, that sets free. Okay, so when we celebrate the word of God, Jesus is in our ministry. Because it's the eternal word, the word that was there in the beginning. Okay? So every time we celebrate the word, we share the word of God. It's more Christian community, our brothers and sisters. We do Bible study, reflect on the word. We celebrate uh, the Lord is in our midst. The Lord is in our midst in a very mighty, unique way in the Holy Eucharist. He took himself bread and said, take this all of you and eat of it. This is my body to be given up for you. And he like us today. Chance blood. So, when we, we uh, celebrate Mass, we are breaking the bread. What was bread and wine after consecration becomes the body and blood of Jesus Christ. When we come to receive, receive, we receive, uh, we receive Him in the, in the species of bread and wine. Now, which is body and blood of Christ. Do we believe that? Or we remain at the stage, at the stage, at the level of the people who took Jesus for granted because of familiarity, because they know his background, because they claim to know him better. 
So we have opportunity always to uh, participate in the Holy Eucharist at Mass daily and some Christmas every Sunday. But sometimes we may take that for granted. Sometimes we may not believe that he has really present the Holy Eucharist. So today, do the necessary. Let us pray that we may have deep faith in the presence of Christ in the Holy Eucharist. That we have deep faith in the presence of Christ in our midst whenever we celebrate the word. We have deep faith in the presence of Christ in our midst where two or three are gathered by him in his name. And Jesus says that if you ask the Father anything in my name, he will grant you. He says, No, and the door shall open. In Matthew chapter 7, verse 7. Six shall find, I shall be given. So this is our opportunity, it's our opportune moment to ask, to seek, to know. We had in the first reading, second book of Samuel, an incident that happened. The event that happened in the time of King David. Okay, King David uh, uh, took population census. He wanted to know how many people they are in his kingdom. And send his um, commander to up to, to implement that. And indeed he did the count and brought him back the results. Then he, after that he grieved in his heart. He came to realize that what he has done is a sin, it's a displeasing to the Lord. He has done something wrong. So then you may ask, what was wrong with the taking population census? What is wrong with the counting people know how many they are in your country, in your region, or in the world, and so on? Okay. The point is that where David failed is that he, it's God who was fighting the battles for David. It's God who was protecting him against enemies. It is God who was saving the Israelites from their enemies and fighting battles for them. So now, the idea of counting people was so that he, he can be able to send his army, military for military resource, of which is like I am no longer trusting in the providence of God, in the protection from God, but he, in himself. which is the same as like, almost like idolatry. It's very risky to do that. The motive, what's the motive for taking, for, for taking population census? And some people have done this. Some people have taken population census of some countries, not necessarily for the claim of economic progress, okay? But it, it's not true sometimes. Sometimes they want to know how many they are so that they can strategize and start a launch a project on how to reduce that population. And they call it, they use imperial term, a population explosion. They say in Africa, there's population explosion. So we need to do something to reduce that population. Do you know explosion? Have you had, it? Have you seen, have you had a bomb exploding? Where is the population explosion in Africa? Where? If, if we are doing that in reference to the, to, the, to the availability of resources, economic resources, and so on, how many resources, natural resources do we have, for example, in Zambia? It's a lot. In relation to the population. There's a lot of idle land here. Fertile. There are a lot of minerals. But they're all siphoned. Most of it siphoned are out. Then you say that it's population explosion. So how to reach population. So the motive matters. Why do you want to do that? So for David, it was for military purposes. So it was like diverting from trusting the Lord, trusting himself and people. And the scripture says, cast be man who puts his trust in men instead of God. And blessed is be man who trusts the Lord. So let us pray that we may trust in the Lord, in his providence. Okay, you may trust the Lord for protection. Present, we trust the Lord for deliverance from whatever situation we may be. So, David, uh, God sent the prophet God, G-A-D, to go and tell David to choose there are three things. It was like multiple choice question, which they has, you just take all the three. One was uh, three years, okay, of famine. 
uh, no rain, and so no be no harvest. Another one was three months flight from the enemy. Enemy pursuing you, you go to in hiding for three months. Another one was three days of pestilence, a pandemic. If you are you, what would you choose? Because there was no option. You see, there is a time whereby when you persist in sin, in spite of God telling us to see her in the world, but you don't repent. And sometimes there's no reverse, you have to, to uh, you have to face the consequences. So David said, he can say that it's better I be punished by God than, than human beings. It's better I fall in the hands of God than of human beings. Human beings, men sometimes are very brutal. Okay, sometimes they don't have a vocabulary of forgiving. Sometimes they are not merciful. So God chose to be punished by God than by man. So this, this is something that we need to think about. Because some of us fear men than we fear God. We fear the devil than we fear God. Okay? We honor people than we honor God. And the devil said, better, I better be judged by God, better be punished by God, okay, whatever it is, than men. Because he said, because God's mercy is great. God's mercy is boundless. So the pandemic was there for three days and uh, many people died because of that, heard that. And again, God, out of his mercy and compassion, stopped the angel from destruction. And then the cried out and said that now this sin is me who committed, uh, it, uh, it's me who deserves to be punished alone with my family, not with these innocent people. You see? Because sometimes when you commit sin, we don't know that it's going to affect very many innocent people. Okay? So be aware. Sometimes people commit sin, they affect many innocent people, and you have no power to be able to stop that. So that's why also we have obligation to pray for our leaders, to the president of each country, of our countries. Because when the president commits a sin, there's a sin that he can commit that will affect the whole nation. That's what happened. Okay? When a, a president enters into idolatry, witchcraft, devil worship, Illuminati, it's, it's bewitching the whole country. When a leaders uh, enter into these things, satanism and so on, they are bewitching the whole country. So when a leader is entrusted with the guiding of the people and so on, so when he, he does some, there are some Things that when he commits or wrong wrongs he does will affect others. And so we have obligation to pray for our leaders, our political leaders, for our church leaders, okay? For our bishops, for the Pope, okay, for the priests, for those in charge of parishes, communities, okay, civil leaders, and so on. Because sometimes they do some things not knowing that they're going to affect people whom they are in charge of. Okay, so what do we do? Like in the situation of David, you see, some people will not see the connection between. And now that was three days of, of pestilence, okay, pandemic. Something, for example, like, like locust coming and clearing everything, or like a epidemic coming like COVID nineteen, okay, or like a cholera outbreak. Now this first reading is telling us that those things happen because of the sea. And here we don't accept that this uh, epidemic we're having, this cholera can be because of sin. So are we, are we being realistic? In 2017, I may say, people are praying, of course, in the sitting, and it was serious. There was a lot of cholera. There was cholera outbreak here. And then in, in, in Zambia, then in the Mary said, uh, many people, many Christians, during Lent, they don't go for confession. They don't do repentance in preparation for Easter. Many Christians during Advent, they don't do repentance in preparation for Christmas. And even Catholics and even Christians, other denominations, in fact, the other denominations even worse. 
Sometimes even during before Christmas, they just have other programs. Nothing like uh, preparing for repentance. So uh, this cholera also can end if people decide to repent. There are people who never repented during the uh, Advent before Christmas, up to date, from last year. Imagine from the beginning of last year, and some even three years ago. So let us pray. We, if we have God, the Lord has revealed to you this, make a reparation for, for the sins of our nation. Make a reparation for the sins of our families. Make a reparation for the sins of our ancestors, and God will grant us healing. Remember John Bosco dedicated his, uh, the, the congregation of Celestia, okay, to Mother Mary, help of Christians. In fact, the sisters Celestia are called daughters of Mary, help of Christians. Why? Because John Bosco, when he was nine years old, before he knew what he was going to be in the years to come, in a dream, Mother Mary showed him the, about the things about the youth, the young people, those who are perishing because of uh, uh, challenges in life and so on. In a dream, when he was nine years old, Mother Mary revealed to him, and that dream is why John Bosco was, was pushing him until he came to uh, dedicate his life in the priesthood for the service of the youth and even from the congregation. So do not uh, underestimate the dream that uh, the Lord spoke to you either through the Virgin Mary or any saint, even when you were young. Amen? St. John was, but Mary spoke to him in a dream when he was nine years old. And we can see the fruit of that dream. God is good all the time. and all the time. God is good. So we pray for healing and deliverance. You can put your place your hands where you are feeling this. Where you have, if you have any complication, sickness, illness, disease, whatever it is, put your hand on your stomach or your chest or your head or just sit in a state of uh, uh, trust in the Lord. Because we say that despite of these people uh, rejecting Jesus, the prophet, but still he laid hands on a few sick people and healed them. Amen? Yeah, out of compassion and mercy. God is good. Amen. So although we are sinners, Jesus will not stop uh, uh, healing us and uh, saving us. Lord Jesus Christ, your word has come like rain, like snow, and he has said to the five, chapter 5, verse 10 to 11. You say that the word of God cannot go back empty. It has to fulfill the purpose for which it came. And so, Lord, may me the situation of your children, wherever they are. Those who are suffering from any type of sickness, diseases, grant them healing. By the chain of our mother Mary, health of the sick, may you touch them and heal them. Those who are terminally ill, or those who have complications with, with the uh, um, uh, infection or the body organs not functioning normally, even those who are also affected psychologically or spiritually, physically, in all types, grant them total, complete healing in the mighty name of Jesus. Also, we pray for marriages, that marriages which are in crisis may be stabilized and love may flourish once again. Pray for expectant mothers who are safe delivery. We pray for families that the institution of the family, as God designed and intended, shall be respected and honored and bless the families going through crisis and we come to their age. Inspire us with the spirit of prayer, of daily prayer, of praying rosary daily in our families, in our communities, so that we shall always be able to touch the heart of God through prayer. We repent of our sins and sins of our nations, sins of our families, of our ancestors, and our own sins. And Lord, have mercy, heal us. Have mercy, bless us. Have mercy, and empower us with the gifts of the Holy Spirit. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Amen. Amen.